Well, on my, uh, a little while ago, one of my lovely table mates said to me, how many of these events do you get to speak of uh, at? And I said, there aren't that many of these events in the world, and this is a really special place. I feel very fortunate to be here, and that you support your library in this way. Let me just say, uh, I applaud you first. if I was related to Nora, and I said she was my grandmother. <laughs> but, I have three prodigiously talented sisters, talented parents who were screenwriters, all writers, and anyone who has talented siblings knows this is a curse and a blessing. And uh, I don't blame them, but it did take me a long time to get to write. I didn't start writing until I was well into my 40s. And, um, I was the one who said I'm not a writer. Uh, I teach, and I still teach, uh, but I am a writer now. Um, the first novels that I got published were written with a co-author. They were the Dr. Peter Zak Mysteries. And working with a neuropsychologist who loves to read mysteries, has uh, just a wonderful sense of story, uh, was a great way to start, because I was sure I was never going to have an idea. And he had all these ideas, and I could write. Unfortunately, he thought I was going to make him write. I thought I was going to want to write. It was a great partnership. Um, we stopped working together after novel number five, and I went on to write a book about writing, and a book called A Thousand and One Books for Every Mood. But all the while, I was thinking, can I write one alone? Can I do this alone? Can I come up with an idea? And I will tell you that I was getting pretty desperate when I went to a yard sale. Now, I love yard sales. I, I go to them a lot. Um, my husband is a demon yard sale person. But this is one around the corner from me at a house that my daughter used to play out, a big Victorian. All the stuff out in the yard I recognized. You know, oh, that's the lighting fixture from the little girl's bedroom. And I, you know, oh, that's the toilet. I mean, I knew with everything that was there. And I'm chatting with the woman in the driveway. And, you know, what did you do about the tiny little bedroom on the third floor? And what about the tin ceiling in the kitchen? Did you keep it? And the wainscoting? And I think as much to shut me up. She said, would you like to go inside and look around? I said, I'd love to. She pointed to the door and she said, go ahead. There's no one inside. Help yourself. And I think this woman is a lunatic. But I go into the house. I let myself in. And it's completely transformed. Walls are gone. It's open. Now, it was one of these little rabbit warrenty Victorians that was built to retain heat. And now they've opened it up. And it's beautiful. And it's Laura Ashley window treatments and everything. I'm going up to the second floor. And finally, the mystery writer in me kicks in. And I think, what if one goes to a yard sale? Somehow, she talks her way into the house. She goes inside. And she never comes out. <laughs> well, I got out of that house very fast. <laughs> Skid marks on the truck. And I thanked her very much. And I was really excited because I knew I had an idea for a book. I didn't know what happened to this woman. I didn't know how she talked her way into the house. But by the time I got home, I knew that the woman coming to the yard sale when it disappears was nine months pregnant. <laughs> and the woman having the yard sale is nine months pregnant, too. I know. So I had an idea. I didn't know where it was going to go. And I proceeded to break every rule in my writing book, <laughs> which was I didn't outline. I didn't think about what was this story. I didn't think about my main turning points. I just started to write. And as a result, it was an ugly writing process. It took me about three years. Uh, but when I was finished, I was very happy with the results. I got a good deal uh, with a publisher. My agent was happy with it. And looking back at it, I just want to talk briefly about some of the themes that I wanted to write about. And it's funny, you know, I didn't approach the book and say, I'm going to write about pregnancy. But that's what I ended up doing. I, this book is so completely about things in my past. I, I am completely worried that with the new book that I'm writing that I have nothing left to say. But at any rate, I wanted to write about that moment of 
maximum vulnerability when you are nine months pregnant, you are about to have a baby, and you've worked your whole life, and now all of a sudden you're home, you don't know your neighbors. I didn't know my neighbors. I didn't know my neighborhood. Uh, my husband was off at work. I didn't know if the baby was going to be healthy. I didn't know if the pregnancy was going to end happily, if I was going to you know, be brave and get through it. It was a really scary moment and so much to lose uh, if this, this child that I hadn't even met was not you know, okay. And so I wanted to write about that moment of being at the precipice. And you know, it's like being in a roller coaster. You can't get off. You are committed. <laughs> um, so that's the first thing. The second thing I wanted to write about was what I call the tiramisu of high school. <laughs> the layers. Um, there are three main characters in this book. There's Ivy, who throws the yard sale, David, her husband, and Melinda, who's the woman who comes to the yard sale. And when you look at high school, you know, there's that top layer, you know, the golden kids, the kids who are the football players and the cheerleaders and the kids who just seem to have dates and fun and crowds and they're just happy. And it's David, uh, the, the, father, the husband, the father to be in this book, is the high school football player. I can't believe she ended up with him because she was like me in the middle. She was an athlete but not the best athlete. She wrote for the paper but she wasn't the editor. She, she was in the drama club but she painted the scenery. Just that kid in the middle who has some friends, but wants, yearns, watches those popular kids, and she ends up marrying David on a fluke. The bottom layer, that's Melinda, the woman who comes to the yard sale, and that's the layer of kids who seem to be singing in a different key from all the other kids. They're their own odd assortment of quirks and... and